Okay, this is the recording for VHDL Lab 2. So I'm going to kind of walk you through what you need to do here. Let's create a new project and let's call it Lab 2 uh, oh, Demo. See if that guy, call it a yeah, demo underscore in case there's another demo out there. I click next. Let's see, make sure we have Spartan 3E. We got the 500E, we got FG320, that looks good. We're using VHDL, and I think we're fine there. Next, finish. All right, so there you go. So now you've set up your lab too. Now what do we want to do here? First thing we want to do is add a new source. We want it to be a VHDL module, and we want it to be EQ1. All right, and it's got to be a VHDL module. All right. So let's do next, next, and finish. And now what I'm going to do is just take out all the comments just so we can kind of focus on the VHDL and see how it stubs me out an entity. Let's go ahead and save things. Now what I want to do here is, let's see. I want to create that um, one bit comparator that we did talked about in class. And I'm just going to copy and paste things here for um, uh, just to speed up the video a little bit. And then you can always pause it and do what you want. But basically, we had a 1-bit input, I0, 1-bit input, I1, and a 1-bit output. And they're all type standard logic. Well, uh, Lab 2 says implement that with NAND gates. And here is my NAND gate implementation. Okay. So I'm taking I0, I'm NANDing it with uh, I0 and calling that I0P, and then I'm using I0P down here and NANDing that, and then I'm NANDing the two outputs. Well, when you convert your AND or SOP network, uh, you should get something like this for a NAND network. But notice I'm using a couple of signals that aren't uh, inputs or outputs, so we need to put those in there. Right, so let's do that, Control C. And there you go. Put that in there. Now that's the entire program. Let me scroll this down there. That's EQ1. That's a one-bit comparator where we implemented NAND gates, all NAND gates. Okay. So um, yeah, if you actually look at these guys, what's happening here? Well, that's just I0 prime. I'm running I0 into a two-input NAND gate, and then that's going to basically invert it. So that's I. That's basically not I0, and there's not I0 there. A balance two level. SOP and or you can blindly replace with NAND gates. Okay, well, so now that I've got this guy, we want uh, to be in the simulation mode, so make that sure that bullet at bubble or radio button is checked. Go to EQ1, and let's see, we go down to here. I can um, right-click that, rerun all. Let's save that, and down here we should be checking our syntax. Okay, it complied. Great. So now what I want you to do in this lab is I want you to actually simulate that guy. Okay, so to simulate it, what we need to do is we need to add a new source file. Project new source, and we don't want a VHDL module, but we want is a test bench. Okay, so make sure VHDL test bench is selected, TB, and we'll call it EQ1. Okay, so I've got a test bench, and I'm calling it test bench, and I'm going to test the EQ1 component, so I label it TB underscore EQ1. Now what it does is it says this is a test bench file. Which component do you want to test? I want to test EQ1. It's the only one I got. So it lists that one right there. If I had more than one component, it would list it, and you would select the one you want to test. So at this point, let's just click Next, Finish. And now it's creating a test bench file, but if you look up here, things are a little different. My EQ1 is now a node under my TBEQ1. Well, TBEQ1 is a test bench file, VHDL, and it's testing the EQ1 component. All right, so we need to open up the TBEQ1 test bench file. Let's get rid of all the comments just to, so we can focus on the VHDL. Okay, there's your library. Test bench files have an empty entity, okay? Now, when you look at the architecture component, um, you're using a behavior architecture of the entity TBEQ1. Now, the component that you're going to test, you have to declare it. Well, there's a declaration of EQ1. Okay. Now, I've got two test inputs and one test output, and these guys have the same name as the variables of my component. Okay. Now, I'm not going to use a clock, so we want to get rid of that guy. Okay. Now, in the 
Now notice, this is your architecture. Notice we got a lot of stuff in the uh, first part of the architecture. Usually in class we only declared a single variable, but now I'm declaring a component and I'm declaring two signals to be used as inputs and one to be used as output. So now I go down to my git begin end. Well, up here we declared the component. Now down here in the begin we have to instantiate it. So I'm instantiating an instance of EQ1. I'm calling it UUT, unit under test. I'm mapping the variables of EQ1, which are I0, I1, EQ, to the variables of this test bench file, which are I0, I1, EQ, that we declared right here. Okay. Then we don't need any clock processes, so you can get rid of that. And all we have is a single process right here called stimulus process. Now this is a label. This is just the name of the process. I can get rid of that. And now my begin in block just has a simple process. Notice there's no sensitivity list here. We don't have any sensitivity list. Well, when you don't have a sensitivity list, that process would get executed automatically. All right, so let's see. Now, I got to get rid of this variable here because that's referring to the clock. And at that point, I think we're good, right? We actually have um, created a a test bench file, a component EQ1, and a test bench for that. And here is the process that does all the testing. So at this point right here, what I want to do is I want to wait for 100 nanoseconds, and then I want to say I0 is equal to, actually let's give it the right name, I0 is equal to, and let's see, let's make that a 0. And then I, oops, got cap locks on, I1, we'll make that guy equal to a one, all right. Yeah, at least it should be single quotes, right? Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to wait. And then I'm going to copy this guy and go through all my possible values. I can do I0 and I1 both 0. And I could do 0, 1. And I could do 1, 0. And then I could do 1, 1. And I'll wait 100 nanoseconds. And then down here, you wait indefinitely. So the process will automatically kick off because it doesn't have a sensitivity list. And then when you get down to here, you'll wait indefinitely. So let's save everything. Now let's select EQ1. And let's recompile that guy. That's good. Now select test bench EQ1 and rerun uh, the check the syntax on your test bench file. Okay, so now both of them are good. So now what you can do is double click the simulate behavior model. That'll actually fire off another process which will bring up another window and let's see. Simu okay, there you go. Now what you've noticed is another window came up. Let me shrink this guy down. See how we've got another window in front of our uh, window that we use to create the VHDL? Okay, so what you need to do here is scroll your mouse along the top and look for the thing that says uh, zoom to full view. And then when you zoom to full view, let me maximize it out now. Let me kind of shrink some things down to manage my real estate here. When you say zoom to full view, you map all the um, data that you've collected so to the screen. And you notice initially we uh, waited for 100 nanoseconds, okay? And then at 100 nanoseconds, we set I0 to 0, I1 to 1. And then since it's a 1-bit comparity, EQ was equal to 1. Then at 200 nanoseconds, I set I0 to 1, or 0, I1 to 1, and now EQ is equal to 0. Then I waited 100 nanoseconds, so at 300 nanoseconds, I set I0 to 1, I1 to 0. And now IQ is still 0 because they're not equal. And then 100 nanoseconds later, at 400 nanoseconds, I set I0 to 1, I1 to 1. And now EQ asserts to um, um, 1 because the bits are equal. All right? So let's kind of shrink down this guy. That was my simulation. Close that. Uh, do you really want? Yes, we do. And it takes me back to the uh, ISC design tool where I've got two files. There is my component, and this is my test harness that declares that component. And in the begin block, it instantiates that component. The variables on the left are from the component. The variables on the right are from the uh, test file. So let's actually try something here. Let's go up to here and prefix this with a test bench uh, TB, and then put a TB here, okay? 
and then down here what we'll do is we'll change these guys so sometimes people get confused because those are the same variable name but um, the ones on the right are from the test bench and then down here what I'm doing is I'm setting the test bench files right yeah control C oops let's do this control C and then we'll change these guys to uh, just I'm changing so as I go through here I'm changing the values of my test bench files but that instantiation up above map these test bench variables to the variables in the component through the port map statement so let's save that um, let's um, go back and click on your component because you gotta always do this a lot when you start changing things just go back and make sure everything's got a green check mark now go up to the test bench file rerun that guy and now let's uh, double click on simulate and see what we get and zoom to full view and there you go yeah so see there's my test bench files zero zero gives me a one zero one gives me a zero one zero gives me a zero and one one gives me a one all right there you go you've created a component one bit comparator and you've created a test bench to evaluate it thanks and uh, stay tuned for part two